All right. Hello, this is Christian. So welcome to another video with me. Today, we're going to look at component communications and Vue.js. So this is the learning unit 13. And I do apologize for the delay of uh, delivering this course or this unit because I basically lost all the content and I had to kind of go back and try to um, find whatever I could. So uh, that's why it's a little bit late. But um, we're going to look at communications using the uh, view framework. As you can see here, we're going to, there are a couple of ways how components communicate. When we say communication, we are talking about passing data between two components, right? And one of the most um, common, uh, I guess, ways is to pass data from a parent component down to a child and from the child up to the parent or from sibling to sibling or things like that. So you can see here that view. Uh, pass data and usually the same for all frameworks as far as I know it's always in one direction only from the parent down to the child we pass in data in that direction and we pass data through a property called props and then when you pass data if you want to pass data from the child up to the parent you cannot do that directly so you have to go through uh, a some kind of um, event or function that the parent can actually re receive or can listen to. And then once you receive that event, then you can actually receive the data from the child to update your data in the parent component. So again, here's just some, some things here. When I look at just the two things, look at the props and how you emit data from the child using the emit function and a custom event. So for example, you have the root component and then we have the subcomponents down here and how they pass data up and down the tree is what we're gonna do today. So let's go into the IDE over here and I show you, um, this is, we'll take a look at the view project, the view um, seal life first, okay? Because it's already built into the program. I'm gonna go and just make some modifications and we'll walk through the process of how that works. And then we'll jump into the uh, uh, CDN version. So this is the, uh, root uh, template. We're going to bind to this ID right here. Okay, so we're not going to touch this at all. And then in the main JS file, this is right here. This is the root component uh, root file or the entry point to the program. Now let's look into the component called app component right here. I'm going to just close this one now. So here we have, you know, the script, the template, and the style, right? If you look at the template, it has a tag. One, uh, the header tag, these are just regular HTML tag. Um, we have the hello world. That is this hello world here. We have two components imported into this uh, root component, the hello world component and the welcome component. So we use them in here. The hello goes right here. And then the main and welcome goes in the main tag. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the main tag down here, the welcome component. Just do a control back tick, I mean, control question mark. And then it should reflect on the right side that is now gone. So what you see here is basically the logo, which is part of the uh, parent component or the root component. That's this logo up here. These two lines of text are actually coming from the hello world component, which is the child component. So if I turn this off, you're gonna see that's just the logo is running on the right side, right? So we have one, you know, uh, um, parent component, I mean, uh, data in the parent component, and then these are the child components. So let's take a look at the hello world component here. Now this file, this tag, we import it up here. Now this is what's using a uh, the composition API. When you see the script tag that has the word setup next to it, this is an indication that it's using the composition API. So when you uh, import components using the composition API, like you see here, the hello world and the welcome here, you can just use it right away in your template tag like this. If you're using the other approach, you have to manually register those into the components attribute or um, property before you can use it in your template. And I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll go over that later. Okay, so uh, here, what you see here is the hello world tag, which is the child component. And then we pass something to that child component. This is how you pass data from the parent component down to the child component via properties. 
So here, MSG equals a text called you did it is the property, right? So the MSG is the property, the name of the property or the key, if you want to call it that. And then the content that it contains is this thing inside the pair of quotes. Okay, that's what you see over here. If you change that, right, you see it reflects on the right side right away. That is just a regular a string of text you pass to MSG and then so forth. So therefore, when you pass this down to the child component, how do how does it receive it? So let's take a look at the hello world over here. I'm going to go right click on it and go to uh, definition. So here is the hello world uh, file. Now, same thing, template, style, and things like that. So I'm not going to you know focus on the scope or the style. It's just let's put away down here. Okay, we don't want to see that. It's confusing. So we have the template here, and then we have the script again set up. So this is using the composition API as well. And then you can see right here a function. Let me break this down a little bit for you can see. A function called define props. This is a built-in function built into view framework. You use that to define or to receive uh, props or properties from the parent. Okay, if you don't have any you know, data passing from the parent, you don't need this function. Then that's that's fine, right? But since we do need the data called MSG, we need to define the function and use the function here. So you can see that is this function takes a property, the, the purple color brace here. Inside there you have just, again, bunch of keys and value pairs, right? Now the property name is called MSG. This name must match the name you give out here when you pass it to the child component. So what if you call here MSG? You have to pass it down and use that MSG as well. Now, as far as I know, they have to be in lowercase uh, just to be safe. If you have an uppercase, um, it may not work. All lowercase is better. Okay. So MSG receives that data. This is a string literal assigned to a property called MSG. It goes down to the child component where I assign that in here. The MSG colon, you have a curly brace right here. This just tells you that you're expecting this you know, MSG message to be a type string, and it is required. Now, whether you put a record or not here, that's not gonna crash your application. This is usually used only when you want to validate your data. No, we're not gonna do that because you don't have time to do that, but only for validation purposes. If you don't validate at all, then usually you could just take this whole thing out, and you must assign that MSG to a certain type. I can't just leave it like that, okay? If you leave it like that, uh, I'm not sure it'll work on C. As you can see, it broke, okay? So you have to assign that to something of a certain type. So you can put a colon. If you want to put a zero, that's fine. Uh, as long as it's assigned to something, then that's fine. The zero means like it will infer that to be a number type. If you expect this MSG to be a string, then you put string, string class here, okay? If you want it to be a, um, a, a number, you put number, right? You put a Boolean, whatever. Uh, just so it kind of gave you an indication of what the type you expect to receive. It doesn't mean if you will bully, I'm going to receive a number. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to crash. No, it doesn't crash, right? As you can see, I expect a boolean, but I got a string anyway. Uh, if I put a number, okay, and it would still work, okay. So it just use that for, um, uh, you know, validation purposes. So let's just say we're going to put it back to string here. Okay, and then once you define it inside the props, define props function, you can use it right away in the template. Okay, so MSG goes right here, right? If I change that to like MSG1, it's going to crash on the right side, right? This, it's not going to say, it's not going to find it. So that's that. Now, if you want to use it inside the script tag over here like this, right? So you, you can't do this. Like, let's say I'm going to put um, uh, let um, I don't know, let's just say text equals MSG like that, right? How do you get this MSG out so they can use it in the script here? So you notice you can see it crashed already. Um, if I go and press the F12 to see the messages, the console, let's do it again. You'll see that MSG is not defined, okay? This MSG refers to line seven. That's this guy right here. But it's okay if in the template. So if you want to use it in the source, you have to define a property to this variable, this function. This function will return the data back, but if you don't use it in your space in the class code, uh, code here, 
source space, then you don't have to return anything here because you could just go directly to the template. If you don't want to use it inside here, then you have to set this to something like props. Okay, it's another variable. I call it props. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. So this props now contains the data inside this curly brace here, right? It returns that. And then now you have to get the message via the props object like this. Okay, so you can see that if I refresh that, and then if I go down here somewhere, maybe right below the H1, let's put a P tag, and we'll put here um, text. And you should see text right over here. It says you did it here, right? Same copy as the other one. So that is how uh, you will access the data inside this props. I can just to show you if I turn that off, right? it's gonna crash and it crashed right there, okay? So we pass data from the parent down through child this way. Now, what if you want, I mean, you can pass as many as you want, okay? Now, what if you wanna pass this data? Um, let's say, hmm, how do we do this? I wanna pass some data down to the um, to the child. Let's do a, let's, be, let's make it a little bit interesting, okay? So let's go up here. Oh, one more thing, because I'm using the composition API. If you want your variable to be reactive, meaning that if things change in the background, if your data happen to be changed and you want that to be reactive, meaning to reflect live on the view, you must register that using the ref function or the reactive function. So I'll go back again, right, make sure it's working. And so let's say that I'm gonna pass this data, um, uh, it's some just some data. Let's see, let's call it uh, const cities equals some cities like, um, you know, Kenosha, um, I'll put here like uh, Boston, and Miami, okay? If I just do that, then this is not reactive. Meaning if I later, if I change the cities that uh, of zero Kenosha to a different city, you're not gonna see over here, okay? So for now, let's see that I'm gonna pass this array of data down to the child component so I can display it down here, maybe right below this text here or something. So you do the same thing up here, right? You go here and, assign a new variable called cities equals. And if you have, if I do this, okay, if you do that, so what you're doing here is basically you just assign the string literal of the word cities to a variable called city, which is a property. So this city here is not this city. This city is here is not that city, okay? It's, it's a key you pass down to the child component. And then to receive that, you have to go down to your child component and add it to the list up here. So put a comma. Put here city, remember it has to be the same name. The type is gonna be string, right? Just just put your text. And then now I can put it down here. So let's say that right below the H3 down here, we're gonna put a um, uh, a div, and then set a div, we'll put here the, I'll make it a little bit bigger, so we'll put like H2, and I'll put here cities, okay? And you're gonna see, that the cities, actually the text city is displayed down here as opposed to an array of cities. And that's because we did not bind the cities to a variable, okay? To bind that to this cities variable up here, you have to put in front this attribute, the colon like that, okay? The colon is a shortcut, or you can also, also use the, the bind. It's the same thing, it's a shortcut. So just basically the colon will do. Now, what this saying is that this city is the same key, but then it's bound to an object or, or another data that will be used inside the parentheses here, or the quotes here. But this variable, this is a variable now inside the space up here, okay? It's no longer a string literal. You expect to find another variable up here in the code that matches name. If I happen to put like, uh, you know, cities like this, it's not gonna find that variable and you're gonna get a no value. And, and so forth. So if I save that, refresh it, you can see it's not working, right? It doesn't crash, it's just like there's nothing there, okay? So if I change this back to the cities like that, and you can see now right there, I already passed the data down to the child component down here as the cities. It's now an object, an array. You print it, and there it is, all the names of that. 
Okay, if you just want to get the diversity, you put C of zero, it should print only the notion. Okay, so that's how you pass data as an object or an array. It can be an object down to the child component. All right, so now let's do a little bit something a little bit more interesting. So in the in the um, right here, so I'm saying that this, let's say I have a function up here. I'm going to create a function, and this function will be called update as cities. And I'm going to pass in a new city variable. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say the cities of a zero will be changed to the new city, right? So when I do that, it will change the city of Kenosha to the new city I sent down, and then you will pass that down to the list again, so it will show up here again. Refresh to make sure it's working. Okay, so it's, it's working fine. Now, this function, I need to also invoke this, you know, somewhere inside the child component. What we can do that, we can do here first. So let's say right below here, um, <clears throat> let's put a button, we'll put update, a city, right? We're gonna bind this button to a, um, a function. So the add symbol, click, and I'm gonna call the update city. I'm gonna pass in a new city, maybe we call it, um, I don't know, Phoenix. Oop. Okay. All right, so when I click the button, it's gonna change the city zero to Phoenix. And if it's correct, it should pass Phoenix down to the child and it will show Phoenix up here in the child component. Okay, so if I click on it, let's refresh first. And right, you notice that it did not reflect the Kenosha down here. How do we know that it is working? Well, you can check it down here when we when you submit it. I can do something like console log. Let's log it to the console, the cities array. All right, so refresh it again. If I go ahead and update. Okay, you see that, you know, city of zero has been changed to Phoenix, but it did not change in the child component. Why? Because this is not reactive. To make this reactive, you have to wrap this with a ref function. This ref function, you have to import from the view, import here, the ref, which is the lowercase one, on the view component, library, and then refresh that. Now, once you do that, Okay, you cannot just access cities data like this. You have to go through a property called value. So cities dot value. And the value property stores the actual data. So from here, that's how you change its data. Okay, you access this in the code only, not inside the template. The template you access the same way as you normally do. So now I'm making this reactive. As you will see, if I refresh now, if I click the update, Kenosha has to change to Phoenix, all right? So that how, that's how you make it reactive. And that's also how you pass data from the parent down to the child. So now let's say that I want to pass this function, this button, if I move this button, okay, as a part of the child component down here, maybe I put it right below uh, the same plate, right? Let's, let's put it right below down here, okay? So this is part of the child, child now, right? Is not the um, not the global uh, parent because it doesn't exist here, right? So again, if I turn it off, you see, right, it's gone. Okay, so it's part of the child. So how do I make it so that when I click the update function, it fail here and it's gonna you know pass the data, or it's gonna call this function in the parent component, call this function and then change the city like that. Okay, so. A couple of ways how you can update the data in the source or in the root component up here. One is you go through a function, you pass this function down as a property like you did here, same idea. So let's say I'm gonna go over here, pass a property and I'll call it update, um, update city equals the function called update city. Okay, so again, stick with lowercase in your key. The actual function is on the right side. So now this update city points to, it's a reference to this function here. I can use it in the child component, okay? So I'm gonna go then down to the child component and then add that to my list up here. So I call it update city. It's gonna be type of function, right? So I know that it's a function. Okay, now what that done, 
then when I make the call down here, I don't have access to the update city function. This is from the parent, but it's linked to this update city with the lower case here like this. Okay, so when I do that, I'm basically calling this function and pass the data to it and then see if this works, okay? So let's refresh that and click update. Okay, so you see it works just like before because this update city is a reference to the function we passed to it right here. So whatever this function does, it will be invoking this function in the parent component. It pass, it needs one argument, one parameter. So we pass in one parameter. So you treat this as a function in the local space here. Okay, now, so that's one way you pass data up from the parent component. I'm gonna add another one down here. We'll duplicate this, uh, Alt, Shift down. And then let's say this time I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm not gonna pass the data, any references down here. Instead, I'm going to trigger an event so that the parent component can actually receive or listen to this event. And once it's triggered, it will actually fire a function, the same function up in the parent component. Okay, so that means if you do that, you go down here and you can create and you can emit, so using the dollar sign, dollar emit, it's a function. So inside the function here, it takes uh, one or two things. Okay, the first argument is always gonna be the name of that event. So for example, click is an event, right? Mouse enter is an event, you know, um, key up, key down, all those are events that build into the DOM. So here you can actually create your own custom event. You can call it whatever you want. The rule is that your event names must be in all lowercase. Okay, so, so no uppercase, okay, all lowercase only. And if you use uh, uppercase, you have to put a dash in front of it. So just to stick with the lowercase like this. So um, the first argument is the name of that. So it has to be in the string format only. So I'm gonna say, you know, maybe on update. Well, you know, man, maybe it'll call something different. Let's say, um, I'm gonna call update city, they the same name, update city. Okay, so now that I'm using two words as opposed to one, this is gonna be a little bit different. So again, don't use capitals like that. I mean, if you do that, it, it will still work, but you have, it's not really nice. And so use lowercase, update city. This is an event, okay? And then if I pass data to it, like you do here, then that is the second parameter, okay? If you pass a single argument called Phoenix to it, let's give it a different name. Let's call it down. Uh, something easy would be like uh, Fargo, okay? So we're way up there in the corners. Okay, so I update the city to Fargo, and then we'll put here update city two so we can have it. Um, okay, that's it's okay. A little bit tight, but that's fine. All right, so um, all right, so when this is the event, this is the value, okay, the argument. So when I call this update city, I'm gonna go up to the parent component. I'm not gonna pass anything down, but what I'm gonna do is gonna listen to an event. So you listen to event using the at symbol, like you do up here, right? The at, click and so forth. The name of the event is update city. And that's gonna be equal to when that event is triggered, what happened? I'm gonna call this function called update city. Okay, so notice again, I did not pass anything to it because the data coming in is automatically bound to the, um, the event uh, argument is going to be assigned to this new city right here. So whatever you call here is going to be assigned to that variable. Okay, so the rest will be, behave exactly the same. So now, if I go back and clean my whole thing here, let's see if this works, okay? So the Kenosha update to Phoenix, if I click the update city two, it changes to Fargo, right? So notice I did not pass any data down, but I still have to bind that to an event, like a click event and listen event, right? So it's listening to this event. If this event is fired from the child component, it will get triggered and it will call the same function here, pass data to this CD up here. Okay, what if you want to be like a little bit creative and you know, instead of saying something like that, what if you want to create a random number? Let's say, let's add another one here. Let's go here, uh, uh, Chicago. Um, one more, just so we have a little bit more room. Let's put here, oh, Honolulu. I'm not sure if I spelled it correctly. Okay, <laughs> maybe it is. 
So when you update the city, instead of saying that um, city, we can then, okay, so we'll do a, a random, uh, maybe not. Uh, so let's add a, another uh, property here. Let's add the state to this. Call it state, the ref, and then the false state will be Wisconsin. Why? Put these right here. And then, oh, something happened. Okay. And then uh, when I update this function, I call it update city, but I could call it, um, you can call it what I, I should just call update. Doesn't matter, I guess. Let's say when I receive another um, parameter here. So let us notice, don't call it state like this. Okay. If you do that, because if I try to update the state, you know, state that value equals state. And you basically go in circle here because this state is the local state here. It's not the global state because now, you know, you you know, you can't do this, right? I mean, let's say you can't. If you do that, it's not going to work because it's not a global space. So give it a different name, like new state or something. <clears throat> Assign that to the new state. You go. So we have two properties, and then now the function accepts two properties and the child component. So when we pass the data down, we have to pass it down to the child as well. Let's go update this right here for now. Let's put here state is equal to state. Uh, okay, so we got that. And then down in the child component, we're gonna receive it up here as well, state as a string. And then let's put right in front of, let's remove this thing here. I don't like that one. Let's put it right below here, right in front of this um, city. We'll call it ooh, state. And put a little dash here like that. And uh, what's that red light thing telling me something? Oh, it's kind of ugly. Sorry, I just put a BR here. Not only would you would use style with the CSS, but just for this demo purposes. Okay, so we have the, the city and the state. So when I pass to the function up here, I need two arguments, right? One is the city, one is the AZ for state, and then the far goal here would be North Dakota, okay? So if this works, then if I click on Wisconsin, right, it changes both of those and so forth. Okay, so you can see how we can pass data this way. Um, of course, uh, you know, you can do this in different ways. This is fine how it is, you can pass this as an array, Right, this whole thing could be an array instead of the way I have it here. Um, because what if this list grows and shrinks and grows, right? How do you do that? And uh, like population and so forth. If you do that, then, you know, use an array or object. But if it's, if it's just two arguments, this will grow. So instead of having this approach, you can also do this. You can put like um, arguments, and then you can condense that using the rest operator, right? build that into an array. And so here I would say arguments of zero is the city and the arguments of two is the state. And then three and fourth and so on, okay? So you can see it should still work just like before. Okay, so now you have one arguments, right? The rest operator is really useful in this case. All right, so you can see how we pass data down to the child components via properties. It can also pass function down as properties. And we can also create custom events in the child component, and we trigger that inside the um, in the tag here via a an event uh, listener directly on the tag. This is a, an inline event registration, and we bind that here in the the, the child uh, the tag. Okay, so this one here you have to pass it down. This you pass up basically. So I hope this is helpful. Now, um, the next thing I want to show you is, you know, how do you convert this? Uh, what does it look like when you use a um, options API? This is decomposition. Okay, so both they can work in, in interchangeably, meaning you know this component can be a, a um, options, this could be a, a, a composition, and so forth. It doesn't really matter. We just don't want to combine them together. It looks really really confusing. So let's say I want to convert this to um, a options API, okay? <clears throat> so here is what you do, let's see, which is which is easier? Probably this, uh, this one, so it has function, things like that, so that's good. 
I'll put some spacing here so you can see. Uh, so the things down here will be the same. We're not going to touch this. It's just the code up here is different, okay? So the import will be will stay the same. And this setup will be removed. Okay, so as soon as you do that, the whole thing crash on the right side. That's okay. Then this whole thing has to be inside the uh, the object. Okay, so what you do is you create a, uh, you export this as a default object like this. Okay, this is the root component, right? So we're not receiving any data. So the thing that you have, I mean, any props, right? You have the data. We have two data fields. This is and these are data fields you have. So you put here the data. It's a function, by the way. It has to be a function, otherwise it won't work. You can use the function this way, or you can use the the um the function expression like this. That's fine too. Okay, I mean uh, not like that. Okay, that's okay too. It just cannot be error function. Error function doesn't work in this case. Um, because it does not bind to this thing. Okay, so we return that data. So these two data will be inside here. So let's move this inside here we'll convert these because it doesn't let you use those cons anymore it'll be a, a, a um a object using colon we don't have the reference you don't need that anymore and then so you can see how this actually works it's an object now right so you get our data set this is a function so this function here actually goes inside here as well under inside the methods property you put it right inside here okay and let me clean up this a little bit so uh, the function update so you can't use that here it has to be update and then uh okay so because we're using this approach when we access this data we don't have the value anymore just the regular data like this and then you also have to use the key with this to reference those all these fields here must reference via the this keyword. Otherwise, if they won't work, it's not reachable. So this, and then there's also this city, so I can see it. And uh, let's see what else. Um, let's see, object data here. Okay, so almost done. Notice I mentioned before that we import the Hello World component, or this one too, to use them you have to register them. If you don't register them, this is not gonna work when I use it here. So if I press the F2 key, it's gonna tell you something, okay? So it says, so you can see it, it doesn't show up, right? It doesn't register this. It doesn't know what this is. But even though your app doesn't crash, it's just not gonna render it. So you have to register that through a property called components, plural. And you, again, it's object, right? Ethics object here, that's why it's called options. And let's put it out here, it's nicer. And then I will register the hello world component and the welcome just in case you wanna use that as well. Okay, so as, you, as soon as, as I register them, you see everything comes back to life again. Okay, so now everything should work as normal. Go back and do them as before, okay? So this is the options API approach and this is the composition approach. Just a little bit different how you set up there, but the code in the body here is still the same. Okay, so take your pick, right? Whichever you like it to use it, go with that. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. In the next video, we're gonna do something similar, except we'll use the CDN version. Thank you, and have any questions, please let me know. Bye now.